Conchirie in Italian translates into seashells. You see them labeled a lot in America as shells or jumbo shells. This one is called Conchiglioni. There's three sizes to this pasta. You've got conchigliette, which is the smallest one. You've got the conchiglie, which is the medium sized one. And the conchiglione, which is the larger jumbo size. I always find it amazing how they found a way to make pasta into the shape of a seashell. But anyways, any shell of this size just screams to me to be stuffed. And that's what we're gonna make today. So let's just jump right into it. We're gonna start by making our weekday sauce, which is just our basic house tomato sauce. It's one of the first videos that I made that was successful, and it was just basically an idea of how to make a, a really good tomato sauce from scratch in about 30 minutes. But, but we can always take the idea of weekday sauce, which is sort of a single batch, and double it, which we're gonna need. Anytime we bake a pasta or something, I always like to double the sauce recipe. Have extra sauce, you can always save it. It's always better to have more sauce than to have less sauce. So always keep that in mind. Today we're just gonna cover weekday sauce. We're gonna make a double batch of it. And that's gonna be the base for what we cook our shells in, in the oven. So it just starts with really good tomatoes. These are the best tomatoes you're gonna buy in the US. So if you see these, these are gold. California grown tomatoes. And when it comes to weekday sauce or tomato sauce in general, you're living and dying by the quality of your tomatoes. So find the ones that taste good. If you don't have these, try a variety of tomatoes. Ones that you like that have the right acidity and sweetness for you should be the ones that you seek out. I like my tomato sauce smooth, so I run it through a food mill. I love food mills, maybe you don't. This is one of the things that makes a tomato sauce kind of the right consistency, just the way that I like it. Takes the seeds out, takes the skins out, all you're left is with the pure tomato pulp that we can then cook the water out of and make it the right thickness and have a perfect tomato sauce. You can use a blender, just do not blend it like on a high heat. Do like pulses. A food processor probably works a little bit better. You just don't want to beat a lot of air into it and like change the color from like red to an orange. I sort of just like to pour the juice in and squeeze the tomatoes with my hand, sort of break them up. It's just gonna make running them through the food mill a little bit easier. Otherwise they can sometimes get stuck in there. And if you like it chunky, you can always use your hands and just crush the tomatoes with your hands. But I like going the extra step. Just work all the tomatoes through the food mill and then scrape all the pulp at the bottom off and make sure you don't waste any of that good stuff. Then scrape up some of the inside of the food mill, work the remaining tomatoes through the food mill again and you'll see you've produced another round of pulp which is gonna help thicken the sauce. I got two basil stems. We're gonna infuse olive oil along with a few sliced cloves of garlic and I like to cut my garlic very thinly, I don't like to smash it. Cutting it thinly brings out a more subtle version of the garlic that I'm looking for. You can do it however you like. I like to split them in half. And I find they just seem to pop straight out of their shell. You don't need any fancy schmancy tricks. Maybe sometimes they're hard to get out, but I find 90% of the time, easy breezy. Now we gotta get the sauce on the stove cooking, and then we can move on to the rest of the recipe. Now I've got a wide, large, high-rimmed pan. You could use a medium-sized pot if you want. Just add enough olive oil to coat the bottom of the pan, then we're gonna throw in the basil stems and the garlic, and we're gonna infuse those flavors into the olive oil. I like to take the garlic just to like a light golden brown, and then I'm gonna kill the heat before adding the tomatoes all in one motion. If you're scared about it, it's gonna splatter, you gotta pour it all in once. It'll cool the pan down fast enough to not splatter. Then you just wanna bring the sauce up to a simmer and you're just gonna let that cook until the water evaporates out of the sauce and you're left with a concentrated, beautiful, smooth tomato sauce. Now while that sauce cooks, I've got this pot filled with water. I'm just gonna add salt to it and bring it up to a boil. We gotta grate some cheese. For this recipe, I'm using one cup Pecorino Romano, about a cup of Parmigiano Reggiano, and then about a half a pound of dry whole milk mozzarella. If you wanna use fresh mozzarella, you can, but fresh is a little too wet for what I'm looking for. You could dry it out, of course, but uh, it's up to you. I had this in the fridge, needs to get used. Gonna grate the hard cheeses on the small diamond grater and then the mozz on the thick one. 
Pecorino is great for something like this, like meatball stuffing is what I use pecorino for, is because it brings the salt. So, so it's an act of seasoning the ricotta a bit. And then the pecorino has a lot of umami and it's a little bit nuttier and I like the combo of the two. You could use either or. I'm gonna eyeball it, call that two cups of cheese, one cup of Parmesan, one cup of Pecorino. Honestly, you just can't hate on Palio. And that should be enough. That's gonna go in the top before we bake it. We're not gonna put it in the filling. Now this looked like a, a really good ricotta, but I'd never tried it, so I wanna see what the consistency is, how wet or how dry it actually is underneath here. Oh yeah, that looks good. That was really thick, so, mm. Okay. So this is a 48 ounces. Was that three pounds? I don't need three pounds. I probably need around two. So let's just sort of eyeball it. That should be enough. We're only gonna make a half batch today because shells, like, it's not like a regular pasta. Half a pound of shells is equivalent to like a pound of pasta because you're stuffing it with so much cheese. So in my opinion, a half a pound of pasta can really serve like three to four people. So if you're gonna make a full pound of the shells, you can double the filling. Add the ricotta to the other cheeses. We're gonna add two eggs. The zest of one lemon. This won't add acid, it'll just add lemon flavor. And if you don't like lemon, you can leave it out, but in my opinion, this makes the dish. Got some fresh parsley here. We just wanna finely dice it. Touch of salt and a touch of pepper. I'm actually gonna add one more egg, just to moisten it up a little bit. That ricotta is just a touch dry, so I just wanna add a little bit of moisture back into it. That's much better. You can always spoon the filling into the shells, but I'm gonna use a Ziploc bag to pipe it in. Now there's like 70, 60 or 70 shells in this bag. I've made this a couple times recently and had five, six maybe, on a crazy night, seven. So making this whole thing is gonna be way too much for me. So I'm gonna go with half, and that half's gonna fill up a pan this big. What is this, a nine by 13 pan. So if you're gonna make the big batch, you're gonna need like two nine by 13 pans or bigger. But for me to measure, we're just gonna pour an even layer. Save for another batch. Our water is boiling, we can cook it off. We wanna cook these for five minutes. The package says cook for 14. We're not gonna cook for half, we're gonna cook for about a third of the time. Then we're gonna bake for 40 minutes so there's gonna get plenty of time for them to cook. Even if we cook them halfway, it's gonna be overcooked by the time we're done baking. So I promise a third is gonna be just fine. Add the shells to the water, give it a stir, and we're just gonna let it go for five minutes. Now, as you can see, the tomato sauce, it's kind of perfect. It's the perfect thickness. The tomatoes have sucked up that garlic and basil flavored oil, and it's emulsified. All we have to do is season it with some salt, and it's ready to go. Five minutes later, we can check on the shells. You can see I can just sort of pinch them open and closed. That's the perfect doneness to fill them with the ricotta. Then drain them, just do not rinse them underwater. That's a beautiful thing. Just like any other pasta bake, we're gonna cover the bottom of the baking dish with a layer of tomato sauce. We need some moisture to help finish cooking the pasta. Let them cool just enough to touch and then we can start piping them with the ricotta. You kinda just wanna make sure you thoroughly fill them. They have a deep center, so just make sure you fill that deep center fully. Now to me, this is the fun part. Any excuse to pipe something, I kinda like to jump on. So get some friends together, some family, and pipe these shells out. Once all the shells are nestled into the baking dish, then we can go on top, splash some of that tomato sauce on top like a Jackson Pollock painting, adding a little bit more moisture and color to the top. It's gonna make this thing look really beautiful. And then I'm just gonna lightly finish it with some of that shredded mozzarella, some grated Parmigiano Reggiano, and then a touch of olive oil. And it's ready to either bake or to store and bake off at a later date. Now we're gonna cover it so that we can steam it to finish cooking it for 20 minutes at 425. Then we're gonna take this 
foil off and cook it for another 20 minutes. We're gonna cook it for about 40 minutes. It should be able to hold a fork once it's done cooking. If we want, we can always pop that broiler on, create some nice browning on top, sort of give it that lasagna baked corner feel to all the little shells because they're kind of sticking up, which gives us an opportunity to create some texture. So I forgot to let the stove heat up, so make sure you preheat the oven. I'm just gonna let that heat up and then pop this into the oven. So I pop it into the oven, set a timer for 20 minutes, 20 minutes later, I go and check on it and remove the aluminum foil. It's looking beautiful right now. Now we just want to create some color. So back on, I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes and then check on it and then broil it for a final five minutes. See this bubbling? That's always a good sign in a bake. The 15 minutes has passed. Now we're gonna turn the broiler on and finish for the last five minutes under the broiler. Don't just cook it for five minutes because I said five minutes. You gotta use your eyes and see what kind of color you're developing. That's gonna be the determining fact. If you see color kind of developing more in one spot than the other, just kind of shimmy the pot around and make sure it's evenly browned on all sides. Then you can shut the heat off, get it out of the oven and let that settle for a minute before digging in. But isn't she a beauty? Now to plate a portion, I like to start with a little base of the tomato sauce. Then we're gonna start to plate the shells. I like to put a few on the bottom and then one on top. Sprinkle of grated Parmigiano Reggiano, a beautiful sprig of basil right in the middle, a touch of good olive oil, forget about it. Told you it would hold a fork. It's really fantastic and what I like is that little hint of lemon. It really brightens up a nice rich dish. Out of control. And with that caramelized mozzarella, intermittently you get little bits of it every now and then. It's that deep flavor. I don't, I don't know what to say. My taste buds, they're just going crazy. If you wanna grab yourself some conchiglione, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description. Otherwise, I'm going for seconds. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. It's like a little mini Italian cheese taco. And go feed yourself.